Hi Chemistry 102. This video is just a quick introduction to some of the concepts that we're going to look at in chapter 10. The first thing you have to know in organic chemistry is that carbon always has four bonds. And if you think back to some molecules that contain carbon that you would have looked at in general chemistry, like carbon dioxide, CO2, when you draw the Lewis structure of carbon dioxide, and this is something that you probably did in general chemistry, you see that the carbon atom in the center here, you see that this carbon atom has four bonds. It has a bond here, 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 and here. So carbon, this carbon atom has four bonds. If I draw this molecule, CH4, this is actually the simplest organic molecule known. This is called methane. So if I draw the Lewis structure of methane, the CH4, again, you can see that that carbon has four bonds. And we're going to see many examples of this throughout the chapter and throughout the course. But the main idea is that carbon always has four bonds. Chapter 10 largely focuses on what are called the hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons are molecules that are made from only carbon and hydrogen. And some examples of hydrocarbons that I'm sure you're already aware of are propane, which is fuel used in a barbecue. And propane actually has three carbon atoms all linked together like this and it has a total of one two three four five six seven eight hydrogens so that's propane you've probably also heard of butane and butane has four carbons and ten hydrogen atoms and here's the structure of butane showing the four carbon atoms linked together or bonded together and we have a total of ten hydrogen atoms if you've ever put gasoline in a car, you've probably also heard of octane. And octane contains eight carbon atoms. So here's the molecule, octane. It has eight, all eight of those carbon atoms linked together, and we have a total of 18 hydrogens. And all three of these compounds, pro propane, butane, and octane, are all hydrocarbons because they contain only carbon and hydrogen and they belong to a class of molecules called alkanes. And chapter 10 talks a lot about alkanes and also molecules that are called cycloalkanes. Learning organic chemistry is a lot like learning a language. And when you start out learning any language, you have to learn a lot of rules. And one of the first things you're gonna to have to memorize are the first 10 straight chain alkanes that are found in table 10.3. And thus, you will be responsible for memorizing the names of methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. You'll also have to memorize the alkyl groups, which are found in table 10.5. And the reason that you have to memorize these is in order to be able to name organic compounds. So you have to memorize these alkyl groups here, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, and pentyl. You also have to memorize all of the branched chain alkyl groups that are found in table 10.6. Sometimes students might find it useful to make flashcards for these, but you're going to have to memorize isopropyl, isobutyl, secbutyl, and t-butyl or tert-butyl. There are also a couple of others that I'll teach you in the main lecture videos. Another table that you're going to have to memorize is table 10.2, which is common functional groups. Now, the way that they have it labeled in the table in our book, this table 10.2, is a little bit strange. Um, they say that type of compound up here, they say the type of compound we can have alcohol, aldehyde, amide, amine, so on and so forth. But we're not going to use the name type of compound for these. We're actually going to use functional group for these. So where it says type of compound, where I have this crossed out, you could put functional group there. And so the functional groups that you're responsible for knowing are alcohol, aldehyde, amide, amine, carboxylic acid, ester, ether, halide, ketone, alkene, and alkyne. This is another example of something that it might be really handy to use um, flashcards in order to help you memorize all of the different functional groups. And if you're wondering why functional groups are so important or why you would have to memorize such a big table, it's because 
there are literally billions of different organic molecules. So it would be impossible to learn the reactivity of all different organic molecules, but by recognizing functional groups, you can predict the reactivity of a compound you have never seen before. Another big part of chapter 10 is nomenclature, which is naming organic compounds. And I, and I just have one example shown here of uh, an organic compound with its name down here. And the reason that naming organic compounds is so important is so that organic chemists and scientists in general can communicate with each other all around the world. So if we have a standard naming system across the board for all scientists, if one scientist in one country is talking about this molecule, 357 trimethyl decane, she or he will be able to relate that structure to another scientist just by using a name. So we're going to talk a lot about nomenclature. And the last part of chapter 10 deals with the reactions of alkanes and cycloalkanes. Alkanes and cycloalkanes both belong to the class of hydrocarbons. And the two reactions that you're going to learn in chapter 10 are the combustion reaction, which is where you take an alkane or a cycloalkane, combine it with oxygen to give you carbon dioxide and water, plus heat energy, and also halogenation, which is where you take an alkane or a cycloalkane, treat it with a halogen, where it says here X2, it could be either chlorine, Cl2, or bromine, Br2, and you treat that with light or heat, and you end up substituting one of the hydrogens for a halogen. Again, it could be chlorine or it could be bromine. Fluorine and iodine, those are the other two halogens, but they don't work well. Anyhow, so this is just a brief introduction to the concepts that you want to look out for in chapter 10.